Hi, YouTube friends. My name is Danielle and I am a senior recruiter here at Pluralsight. It's so nice to meet you. Today, we're going to share tips on how we can ace your tech interview. So while I conduct a lot of interviews, I am by no means a tech expert, which is why I have with me our senior tech recruiter, Jason. Jason's been with us for three years. He's pretty much hired everything from interns to SVPs across every tech space in the company. So if anyone knows what it takes to ace an interview, it's him. Welcome, Jason. Thanks, Danielle. Awesome. Okay, so Jason, I'm very curious. What types of tech interviews will candidates experience? Great question. So there are three or four different main types of interviews. So there's going to be like your coding interviews, um, which is going to be like your pair programming or whiteboarding. Uh, there's going to be your system design interviews. That's going to be like leak coding. Uh, and then there's going to be behavioral interviews or situational interviews. So those are the generally the types of interviews that I see um, go through tech, whether it's engineering product, um, some, uh, some are more relevant, but across the board, those are kind of the, the four that I see. Interesting because I have never heard of coding or systems interviews. So what does that even mean? Yeah. So those are generally reserved for like your engineering type, um, tech interviews and they're mainly focused on showcasing your skill set within coding so pair programming you're programming live with somebody next to you uh, whiteboarding is is doing code on a whiteboard uh, and leak coding is doing like a systems design type interview um, live up front of your interviewer uh, and it's showcasing how the systems connect to each other Fascinating. So how would you even go about acing a coding or systems interview? So those ones are a little bit more specific to skill set. So I'd say um, understanding kind of what systems or it code base that that company is currently using. So making sure you're looking at the job description, things along those lines to make sure that you're going into those interviews prepared. But a lot of it comes down to skill set within those interviews. Um, the interviews that are a little bit more complex, in my opinion, um, that's less related to their actual skill set, more related to like how they can define situations and things like those lines are probably more focused towards those behavioral or situational interviews. And that's generally the first step in the process uh, where you'll get like the coding interviews and things like those lines generally sitting at the second or third step within the process. And it's much more, let's drill down and see if you actually have the skill set to do the role. So it sounds like the behavioral interview is first. You have to ace that in order to move forward to the technical interviews, right? Which is um, what we just discussed. So how do you even ace that first round? Yeah, so the first round uh, is a little bit difficult. There's a couple of tips and tricks that I can give that for people to be effective there. Uh, and these are gonna be your interviews with a, a recruiter or with that first interview with the hiring manager, things along those lines before they get into the super technical pieces. One way that I, I like to kind of have people sit back and think about it is thinking about the STAR method. Um, it's situation, task, uh, action, and result um, is what you're trying to base it off of. So you're trying to identify a specific situation um, or example in which you've done a specific process um, or made an impact at an organization. And they're going to ask you questions and just say like, what, when was a time when you did X, Y, Z? The way that I like tech people to really think about this is for situation to really showcase what the business case was that you were trying to solve for. So don't jump right into technology, jump into, this is why the business came to us and what they needed to solve for. So this might be like integrations into other systems because they needed to get more revenue and they needed more, more companies to be able to integrate with their process. A lot of different use cases for the business on why they would might want to use it, but it generally ties down to revenue, system stability, or like customer engagement, customer interaction. Uh, so being able to showcase that, that situation based on kind of what the business was looking for is going to be your first step. Uh, the next next step would be to figure out what the task is, and that's that's your task. Um, and so, if you're an experienced engineer, it might be designing what that looks like and, and getting down to like what the technical problem was that you were trying to solve. Uh, but it's it's highlighting what your task was in relation to what that that business case is. Then you're going to go into action. This is where you start going into the tech. 
Um, so I want you to save the tech until you've explained what the overall goal was for the company, what the impact was for the engineering group and what your specific role was in it. Then I want you to tell them what you built. And with what you built, this is where the complexities start coming into play. Um, there may have been roadblocks, things along those lines, problems you had to solve. Um, and you're going to build that out within your action plan and be able to kind of showcase this is what skill it took to kind of get there. And these were the, the, the technical pieces. And then it's going to go to results. And that's when you're going to tie it all back together. So this is what we delivered on. This is what was completed. And this was the impact to the organization once we did complete it. We were successful. We raised revenue 20%. We created the integrations that were needed. We were able to connect with 100 different new clients and it brought in X amount of revenue. But if you can tie your result back to your situation at the beginning and back to the business case, that's when you're gonna see yourself be the most successful. And I know that sounds like a lot, right? Like if I'm listening to you, well, I am listening to these people, but if someone's watching this, right? Then we're like, how do we even get started, right? I would recommend thinking about, well, first know the job description, right? Yep. And think about questions that will come from that and practice, right? Like what other tips do you have for interviewers to succeed with the star method? Because in all honesty, if you can't get, if you can't nail that behavioral interview, you're not even going to get to the technical side of things. Yeah. So anytime my friends come and ask me, like, how do I prepare for this interview? What should I get ready for? Um, there's a couple different things you can do. One, you can throw your the job description into ChatGPT and just ask what types of questions will interviewers ask me. And I would build out star examples for those specific questions. And I would build out three or four based on examples that you have. Um, one would be the most impactful. Then I'd also target in the job description, okay, what are the technologies they're, they're using? And when were a couple of times in my career that I've utilized and made changes to that specific technology, and then I'd build out some star statements there. But I would target doing three to five of those just to have a few things in your bag. Will those exact questions come up? Probably not. But one of those examples is probably going to at least lead you to a place where you have that fresh in your mind and you're able to answer the question effectively because you've taken the time to practice, put things on paper and be able to be effective in that interview. I love that. Interviewing is a skill, right? We say this all the time. It takes practice and preparation. So such a great crash course. Jason, I, I so appreciate that, um, especially um, from the decoding and the coding interviews to designing systems on the fly. And of course, like acing that first round, which is what we really dug into. So until next time, happy prepping and go crush that interview.